Hello, everyone. If you're eagerly anticipating Tekken 8, you're likely exploring character options and searching for a tier list. The game boasts a diverse roster catering to various playstyles, including relentless rushdown, careful poking, strong defense, and tricky mix-ups. The Closed Network Test, CNT, featured 16 playable characters, all familiar faces, with legacy skills from previous titles impacting success. To prepare for Tekken 8, consider honing your skills by practicing with these characters in Tekken 7, as most of them are returning from the previous installment. Before we start the video, if you enjoy tier list videos like this, don't forget to like the video and subscribe. Enjoy watching. Nina, characterized by her twin pistols, excels in wall carry and chip damage options, maintaining her signature throws. However, her reliance on lengthy combos for damage poses a challenge, especially in initiating them beyond highs and mids. Despite her powerhouse potential, starting Nina's combo game can be more challenging compared to top-tier characters. While opinions on Nina's current state vary, her performance in the CNT didn't showcase anything exceptional, but also didn't raise concerns about her viability. As a result, I'm placing Nina in the B tier. Kazuya is renowned for his formidable punish game and exceptional defensive skills, coupled with potent pressure tactics in skilled hands. Recently, he gained access to a powerful new string in Tekken, capable of dealing about 40% damage. Despite his high damage output and lengthy combos, playing Kazuya, like other Mishimas, demands considerable skill, and adept sidestepping proves effective against him. His heat engagers enable the use of moves from his devil form, introducing potent mix-ups into his arsenal. Notably, the electric wind god fist now inflicts chip damage, making Kazuya even more lethal in the hands of a skilled player. As a result, I'm placing Kazuya in the A tier. In Tekken 7, Jin makes a powerful return, boasting an enhanced and well-rounded toolkit that takes his abilities to the next level. With some of the game's best normals and the added impact of counter-hit launches, he excels in both neutral play and applying pressure. Jin's fast and safe pokes contribute to a formidable neutral game, and he capitalizes even more on heat and the heightened damage system introduced in Tekken 8. Despite his strength, pinpointing Jin's weaknesses proved challenging in the competitive scene. As a result, I'm placing Jin in the S tier. In Tekken 8 CNT, Paul maintains his distinctive playstyle with formidable damage output, especially when landing moves like Death Fist or Counter Hit Launchers. Taking advantage of wall situations spells trouble for opponents, as Paul can create 50 50 situations, forcing them to make critical guesses. While his poking game is average, and his low attacks don't often lead to significant combos, Paul's success hinges on precise reads, a deep understanding of his neutral tools, and solid defensive skills. It's worth noting that his chip damage escalates in heat, although his pressure during this state tends to follow a more straightforward pattern. As a result, I'm placing Paul in the A tier. In Tekken 8, Law faces a fate similar to Leroy, experiencing a decline in strength compared to his Tekken 7 version. Several of his neutral moves and combo launchers have been toned down, forcing him to rely on heat or specific moves to achieve damage that was once more readily available. The nerfs extend to his mobility as well, a significant drawback in a game where movement plays a crucial role. While Law isn't inherently weak, he now requires more effort to achieve results that top-tier characters effortlessly obtain. As a result, I'm placing Law in the B tier. In Tekken 8 CNT, King emerges as a formidable force with exceptional strength, boasting high damage output and armored moves. His counter-hit game is particularly fearsome, given the increased difficulty in breaking counter-hit throws in this installment. Despite his powerful heat pressure, King comes with inherent risks due to the nature of many of his moves, and a notable limitation is his inability to backdash. In skilled hands, however, King transforms into a high-risk, high-reward monster in the arena. As a result, I'm placing King in the A-tier. Similar to Paul and Nina, Lars remains unchanged in Tekken 8. However, he continues to be perceived as a low-tier character, and the latest installment of the game hasn't brought significant improvements for him. Lars is known for being accessible to newcomers, 
posing frustration for beginners. Nevertheless, he lacks the diverse techniques and punishing options that many other fighters possess, making his gameplay straightforward and a disadvantage at higher skill levels. Despite these limitations, Lars benefits from the heat system, with his heat attacks inflicting substantial chip damage on block and potentially leading to significant damage on a successful hit. As a result, I'm placing Lars in the C tier. Jack 7 in Tekken 7 relied on a strong backdash and long limbs for distant pokes, demanding a clean playstyle due to his slow speed and limited moveset. However, the introduction of Jack 8 transformed the character by merging Gigas's stance mix-ups with Jack's exceptional backdash and poking abilities. Jack 8's significant damage potential, especially when in heat mode, enhances his pressure game and inflicts substantial chip damage with well-timed heat smashes. Although relatively uncommon in the competitive scene, Jack 8 undeniably showcases formidable potential in the CNT. As a result, I'm placing Jack 8 in the S tier. It's been quite some time since June's last appearance in a mainline Tekken game, with her last inclusion dating back to Tekken 2. However, Mama Kazama hasn't been idle during her absence. In Tekken 8's CNT, June emerges as a formidable powerhouse, showcasing both grace and strength in her moves. With a punishing gameplay style, exceptional wall carry, and the ability to knowledge check opponents with parries, Jun stands out as a force to be reckoned with. Adding to her uniqueness, Jun incorporates moves that inflict damage on both herself and her adversary on block, yet recover chip damage while in heat mode. Several of these moves also grant a plus on block advantage. Notably, Jun introduces a distinctive stance enabling health restoration and the utilization of projectiles, making her the most distinct new character in Tekken 8. As a result, I'm placing Jun in the S tier. In Tekken 8, Xiao Yu, once considered below average in Tekken 7, has seen a significant boost in performance. The reduced strength of low parries plays to her advantage, enhancing the impact of her already potent low attacks. Additionally, the introduction of multiple launching throws addresses her previous low damage output. Xiao Yu's inherent strength in evasion remains a key asset, coupled with improved mobility facilitated by unique stances. While her low damage output remains a limitation, the inclusion of tricky mix-ups after knockdowns poses a constant threat, forcing opponents to make challenging decisions. As a result, I'm placing Ling Xiao Yu in the A tier. Despite Leroy taking a hit from the nerf bat in Tekken 8 CNT, particularly with his hell sweep now locked behind a stance, he remains a formidable character. While some of his normals are not as potent as before, Leroy boasts powerful strings and the ability to parry opponent attacks, creating a challenging guessing game for adversaries. Activating heat enhances his pressure and chip damage, showcasing his enduring strengths. Although his combos require specific moves, Leroy stands out as a solid competitor in the game, even if a bit of affection from developers wouldn't hurt. As a result, I'm placing Leroy in the B tier. Asuka excels in maintaining a robust defensive strategy, capitalizing on potent wake-up game tactics, executing effective whiff punishes, and showcasing impressive evasion maneuvers. Her arsenal includes various command grabs and counter stances, allowing her to set up formidable 50-50 situations with strategic setups. While Asuka may not boast the same level of damage output as top-tier characters, her pressure intensifies significantly during heat mode, where she possesses some of Tekken 8's finest heat engagers. Despite certain weaknesses preventing her ascent to top-tier status, Asuka remains a formidable contender when played skillfully. As a result, I'm placing Asuka in the A tier. Lily emerged as a standout character in Tekken 8 CNT, boasting exceptional combo potential and dealing substantial damage upon landing hits. Her remarkable movement and sidestepping capabilities further enhance her prowess, particularly when she activates heat, a state you definitely want to avoid facing. While her offensive strategies carry inherent risks and vulnerability to punishment or sidestepping by informed opponents in the hands of a skilled player, Lily proves to be a force to be reckoned with. As a result, I'm placing Lily in the A tier. Warung's intricate stances contribute to his complexity in Tekken, but his formidable pressure cannot be underestimated. In Tekken 8, 
Sidestepping his pressure starters has become more challenging, particularly with heat engagers involved. Activating heat enables him to accumulate significant chip damage, turning his already suffocating pressure into a daunting force. While his damage output may not be exceptional, the relentless pressure he applies makes Huarong a truly intimidating opponent. As a result, I'm placing Huarong in the S-tier. Brian emerges as a formidable force in Tekken 8, building upon his already robust presence in Tekken 7. His signature high damage output remains a key element of his character design, further amplified in the latest installment. Tekken 8 introduces a set of secure new launchers to Brian's arsenal, enhancing his offensive capabilities. With exceptional space control and a potent snake eye stance, Brian not only boasts swift launchers, but also excels in wall carry, making him a versatile and powerful contender. Additionally, Brian's pressure game receives a significant boost from the introduction of heat mechanics. As a result, I'm placing Brian in the S tier. In Tekken 7, Claudio boasts the smallest moveset among the cast, yet his core tools are robust, featuring effective keep out and approach options, along with potent pressure techniques. In Tekken 8, he elevates his game with arguably the best heat moves in the roster. His heat enhanced attacks inflict substantial chip damage on block, allowing him to maintain significant frame advantage and apply relentless pressure. Additionally, Claudio's moves deliver astonishing damage on successful hits, showcasing his formidable offensive capabilities. As a result, I'm placing Claudio in the S-tier. The video ends here. In your opinion, who is the best fighter in Tekken 8? Write in the comments and let's discuss. See you in another video. Don't forget to subscribe.